Great. So the Higher Tour is a really bold and um, amazing vision that is from the Message Trust. And we believe that the UK church should be in about DEFCON 1 when it comes to youth culture. We saw some research a couple of years ago um, that said that 5% of young people, that's 12 to 18 year olds, were Christian. Um, I was a youth pastor for 10 years in our local church. And I think 5% of young people that I encountered were definitely um, not Christian. I think it was lower than that. I think we were a couple of percent. So we've got a youth culture in this nation that does not know Jesus. I grew up in church and I knew John 3.16. And I know those words in the Bible that says that they are going to death. We're not dealing with something that's nice and fluffy. So we, as the church, need to wake up. We need to realize that we need to get the life and the love of Jesus in front of every single young person in this nation. So a hire um, is an audacious dream to see the entire youth culture shift. We want to see a generation of culture-shifting disciples raised up in local church. So the way we do that is we go into schools and we take our mission teams in. They are bands. They look like something that someone would see on MTV or would see on stage. But what they are is they're backflipping, rapping evangelists who go and share the gospel in a language that young people understand. Um, If I look a little bit tired, it's not because I have two kids under the age of four. It's because I drove from Coventry last night where we're in the middle of higher Midlands. Our vision is to see 75 schools, to go and see around 30,000 young people. Since last Monday, we've seen 15,000 young people in the Midlands. That is in Birmingham, that's in Coventry, that's through the black country and around Solihull. And we invited them all to an event, or a bunch of events, six events to be more accurate. Um, And last night we saw 820 young people come out, um, which was amazing. By the way, I don't know what churches you go to, so this is the time you get excited. We saw 242 recorded responses to the gospel. 242 people last night in Coventry and Solihull said yes to the gospel. We preached it, we communicated it, but also the amazing thing is, is that we're in schools as well. And um, I want to tell you a story from a school last Wednesday. Brightline went in one of the schools. Um, These guys are phenomenal communicators, amazing educators, and just bring the message of Jesus alive for young people. But they're in a Christian school, and after sharing the gospel, sharing their stories, doing some music, just bringing some phenomenal, great, positive stuff to a school, bringing spirituality like we've been hearing about to a school, um, we, we never preach the gospel in schools because um, we, we've got to be really careful about that. But the, this was a Christian school, and the head teacher was in the room, and the head teacher gave us permission to preach the gospel and to ask for a response in a school, which was just like, that doesn't happen in England. Where, when has that ever happened before? Um, and the teacher said, yeah, just, you can ask them to respond. And we're like, oh, go on then, fine. So we asked for a response, and we saw 26 young people in the school say yes to Jesus. The chaplain was there to follow them up. They're going to the chaplain. So that's amazing. 26 young people stepped out of death and into life in a school. And it was last Wednesday. This isn't in the Victorian era. This isn't in the past. This is today in our youth culture. The other thing in 40 seconds is we did a youth conference. Part of the build up is we do a youth conference. We want to train Christian young people. Um, And we challenged them to try and book a school day in their school, to try and get involved in their school community. So three young people from the youth conference went onto the Higher Tour website. We've never had young people go onto the Higher Tour website. That's the first time ever what young people visit a website. None of them. Um, And then they took the school pack. They went in. They found their RE teacher. Throughout the day, this RE teacher had three young people at different times drop the um, school's pack. He rung the church pastor and said, hey, what's going on? I've had three young people from three different churches. Can I book the Higher Tour? We said yes. We landed last week. We're going to a school in Walsall next Monday because of the work of young people. The Higher Tour's coming to Yorkshire in 2019. The music's starting to build. We're excited to work together with churches and to reach a generation. So come on, let's do it. Higher's over there. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, um, so I just wanted to share very quickly a story that hopefully highlights how important it is that we're working in our schools and that we're meeting children and young people where they're at. Um, So last year I led a prayer space activity that helped my young people to explore the Easter story and the final activity was based on the Great Commission and about being sent out to make a difference in our world. Their responses are up on the screen behind me and the next day the chaplaincy was absolutely full of students who wanted to discuss this activity. They wanted to discuss the things that they'd highlighted, the issues that they'd highlighted, and what they could do about it. 
So we shared ideas with each other and I asked them to go away and to think about what it was that they really, really wanted to focus on. Now, a few days later, I'd actually arranged uh, for some friends of mine who uh, run a charity in Uganda to come and speak to the students. Sam, who's the Ugandan director of the charity, was actually in the UK at the time. And he agreed to come along and share his story with my young people. Now, to put this into context, Sam had a really, really difficult childhood. He actually grew up in a slum community in Uganda, and he was given the gift of hope through a Christian lady who supported him to go to school. Now, my students were just blown away by his story. And the next day, the chaplaincy was full of excited students as they'd come to the unanimous decision of what it was that they wanted to focus on. They wanted it to be Uganda, they wanted to help someone like Sam, and they wanted to support a child to go to school. Now, I have to say, we did all laugh at the irony of this situation. Many of the students that I work with have all sorts of issues with school. They tell me that school is rubbish. Insert your own expletives there, because it's usually a lot worse than rubbish. And there's all sorts of reasons why school is a difficult place for them. And yet they were outraged that not everybody has the opportunity to go to school. And they wanted to do something about it. So I want to introduce you to our friend Davis, who is now able to go to school because of my students. It costs, it's amazing, it costs £25 a month um, to support Davis, so we knew we needed to find a way of getting that money together. So the Tour de Yorkshire was approaching, so the students and I decided it'd be fun to organise a cycling event in school. And so students rattled buckets, our staff cycled, and you'll see that some of them decided to do it if it comes up on the screen in a donut costume, as you do. So yeah, there you are, there we are in our uh, school entrance hall. And if I'm honest, I was not sure how much money we would raise. My students don't have a lot of spare cash because of the circumstances um, and family homes that they come from. And I know for a fact that one of my students went without his dinner so that he could donate to this cause. And when he was questioned about it, his exact words were, well, our pal Davis needs it more than me. Now, if the truth be told... That wasn't necessarily true. This student couldn't really afford to give that amount of money away. But his heart of generosity reminded me of the widow's offering who gave all that she had. That's what my student did too. We raised a massive £300 in one week, resulting in a year's worth of support for Davis. Now, nearly a year on, my students are still raising funds and they have a really strong connection with Davis. They love to hear how he's doing, how he's doing at school and receiving letters from him. And in four precious weeks' time, I will get to meet Davis and present him with our school T-shirt because, as my students always say, he's one of us now. Please get involved in schools. These stories are true. For our students who maybe don't feel that they have any confidence in themselves, they don't believe that they have anything to offer, they don't believe that adults believe in them, so they think, well, if that's true, I might as well live up to the expectation. From just get involved, um, the time is gone, but get involved. Yes. Okay, you ready, team? Okay. So you may have seen us around, you might have seen our banner, we're all wearing these same hoodies. Very impressed, aren't you? Okay. Uh, so you might be wondering what on earth is the Centenary Project? Oh, so I've got a scary t- statistic for you. If it's coming up on the screen, some white, right? yep. You will find that in 2014, less than 1% of children and young people attended churches in South Yorkshire. How scary is that? Well, the Anglican Diocese of Sheffield, which is South Yorkshire and a little bit more, decided that was a very scary statistic and they needed to do something about it. And so they said, Let's do something about it. Let's invest some money to celebrate our centenary. And so the Centenary Project was born. And the Centenary Project helps churches to employ youth and children's leaders. These are some of they. We support them with a network. We train them and we mentor them. 
But what we're doing most of all is we're helping them to do the all-important stuff. So they do the important stuff. We just try to support them. They're doing this good stuff in the community, in the church, with children and young people. They're making a difference to the lives of children and young people in their communities. We've currently got 16 workers. We're advertising another post at the moment, and we're growing all the time. But I'm sure what you want to know is, what do they do? They all do lots of things. They all do have lots of different activities that they put on for children and young people. But they're just going to tell you about one little activity that might just inspire you. It might be something that you could do. So, Dave. Um, so we launched an initiative called Messy Church Young Leaders. It's for those kids um, that are getting to the age where they're too old for Messy Church, but they still want to come along. Um, We meet once a month before Messy Church at McDonald's. Other fast food chains are available. Um, And we look at roles and responsibilities of being a young leader. We look at what we're going to be doing at the next month and showing them how they can actively get involved in serving. So, I'm Becky. In one of my parishes, we have no young people, so we decided to start uh, handing out hot chocolate on their way home from school. Um, The kids love it, and this has given us a chance to um, chat to them, and we're organically... Uh, building relationships. Uh, on average, we normally hand out about 30, but this last Wednesday, we handed out 41. Yeah, it's a good thing. So uh, we started a breakfast group on Sunday mornings before our all-age services, try and get the kids kind of there and involved. Yeah. Uh, Hazel didn't know I was putting that photo up. Uh, we just serve toast, cereal mostly. We do a game. Uh, we have a quick chat of something based on the Bible. Uh, and they absolutely love it. And then they all stay on for the all-age service afterwards. And some of them have even started coming to other Sundays in the month after coming to breakfast. Um, I'm Lydia. Um, I've set up Play and Pray at a couple of the, young, the primary schools um, in the village that I'm in. Um, and it's an opportunity to build relationship with the kids. Um, most of them don't come to church. Um, so uh, we're, I go in once a week um, for a lunchtime. Um, and I spend four weeks in one school, a half a term in the other school with each class. Um, just once a week, um, I play with them for the lunchtime. And then we have an opportunity to pray together. With the younger ones, I pray for them. With the older ones, um, I try and engage them in some different prayer activities. Fantastic. So... Lots of exciting things happen. All things that you could do, they all do something different. They're making a difference, and you can make a difference. If you want to know more, come and talk to us. You can, we're a bit obvious what, what we're wearing. We've got a stand out there. If you'd like to get involved, you might want to think you could be a Centenary Project worker. We're also setting up an intern scheme. If you think, oh, actually, I'd just like to know a bit more, just come and talk to us. Thank you. Um, if you was, uh, just look to the screen, there'll be a slide coming up. Um, This lady is a a little girl, she's aged 11, and she has downloaded our smartphone app um, on Android and iPhone called Missional Generation. This app is enabling her to process other people's stories, Bible study notes in the local context so she can share it with her friends. This is one of the things we asked when we said to her, how have you found the app? It says it's giving her ideas of what God is calling her to do. Age 12, 11, she is registering that God is calling her into action. We did some research in Leeds and Bradford, and there was a desire for young people to share their faith, explore more of God, and to be proactive in their faith. But they found it difficult to how to do that. They needed to find a way and an avenue. And so what we have done is when we visit youth groups using our virtuality stuff, we've enabled them to then download this app so they can explore further other resources that enables them to process faith. This app has also been used in a secondary school where young people are leading small Bible studies in their local context called Cells, and they're using this this app as a way to gather young people together across a number of different age groups. So we asked Bex's youth worker, how does she feel the app is helping her young people, especially this little girl? It says that the app has been brilliant for their young people to develop faith, engaging through devotions, Bible studies, video testimonies. The app is enabling young people to develop a further understanding of their identity in Christ. This is a free resource that we've just jam-packed full of resources to enable your young people to explore faith, mission, and evangelism with you as a youth worker, but also with their friends 
And our vision is that they can sit in schools, which we're seeing, showing the videos on their smart, smartphones to enable them to teach others the revelation of Christ. We are so thrilled and excited that this app has been downloaded since we've launched it in June across not just the UK but overseas and it's been downloaded over 1,700 times. I've got a minute and a half left and I want to pray for this girl. And I want you to join with me to pray for this girl and those that are using the app that they will grow in confidence to share their faith, to see school as one of their mission fields. They spend on average 9,000 hours in secondary school. That's their space and place where God wants to use them. Let's just pray. Father, we pray for this girl and all the others who have downloaded the app. We pray that they will grow in boldness and they will understand their identity and they'll recognize that you are calling them into action. Father, we thank you that you've placed children and young people in our care because you trust us to to support them. Bless them, we pray, and help us as leaders to support them as best as we can. Amen. Please join me over here later today using the virtuality. Thank you.